Hi, this is Paul with Seller Labs, and today I'm sitting here with Alec. Say hi, Alec. How you guys doing? Um, Alec is uh, one of our new interns, and he's really excited to learn about retail arbitrage and about selling on Amazon in general. And I think he's got a bunch of questions for me today about retail arbitrage, so hopefully we can give you guys some answers and, and start learning about um, retail arbitrage. So what kind of questions do you got for me? All right, yeah, let's get started. Uh, say I'm new to the e-commerce world, just in a quick uh, few sentences, what is retail arbitrage? <laughs> Succinctly put, um, so retail arbitrage is taking advantage of the price differences between two marketplaces in, in the retail world. So basically you buy something at one retailer and then you sell it at another place. So for our purposes it's basically buying something at a big box store or, a, or an outlet or something like that, like Target or Toys R Us and then going on and then selling it onto Amazon.com uh, typically, although you can sell on eBay or other places as well. Um, so that's, that's basically what retail arbitrage is. So Amazon is known for their great deals, but why are some products uh, have a higher sale price on Amazon rather than in retail stores? Well that's a great question and that kind of boils down to why retail arbitrage works in general and why specifically do you want to sell on Amazon and that's kind of at the crux of, of the whole movement of being able to do this. So basically it comes down to the loyalty of Amazon customers and also just their ability to find stuff supply and demand. So a lot of times Amazon has the lowest price, right? Especially if they are selling the product, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a lower price on Amazon than, than anywhere else. And they've basically built that model so people trust that when they go to Amazon they're going to get a good deal, they're going to get a good service, especially if they're a Prime member. So Prime members get the free two-day shipping and a lot of other privileges. And those people, like my wife, she's a Prime member and she pretty much shops on Amazon and she doesn't really even price check other websites. She goes to Amazon, she finds what she wants, she buys it and she's done. And that's really why it works because if you have something that's selling at you know Target for ten dollars but it's not available on Amazon because Amazon's not carrying it then you can put it up on Amazon for twenty bucks and sometimes you can sell it because people want the convenience of Amazon and that's where they shop and, and, and they're okay with you know paying a little bit more every now and then because most of the time they're getting a good deal Say I'm looking to get started in the retail arbitrage business. How much capital do I need to get started? What, how do I get started? Well, the cool thing about retail arbitrage is you don't have to have a bunch of wholesale connections. You don't have to manufacture expensive things. So it's pretty easy to get started. All you need is a few hundred dollars and a couple of tools and, you know, a brain, right, and a bank account, and you can get going. So I've seen people start with a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I feel like if you have you know more capital, then you're going to grow a lot faster. So if you have a thousand dollars, then you're going to be good. The the biggest expenses besides your inventory are the tools that you need. So you're going to need a smartphone. Probably already have one. Um, and then you're going to need some software on that phone um, to to help you kind of go out and scout for your inventory. And you know, you need a good, you need a label printer probably to print your labels off of, and, and and that's really it. So with a few hundred dollars, and you know, get yourself some equipment, and then which you may already have a lot of that, and then some cash to get going, you can really start start going out to your local store and buy an inventory. So the key to retail arbitrage is sourcing your inventory. Where should I look to get started? What types of products should I be looking for? That's a great question. Um, I think first and foremost. You need to have products that have good margins. Number one thing is margins. Um, you also need to have something that's going to sell relatively quickly in a timely manner. You don't want to buy inventory that's going to stay in stock for six months, typically, unless your margins can justify that. So the thing that I look at is I want to buy something that I can make at least 50% margin on, typically. Um, if it's a really fast-moving item and I can buy you know 100 of them, then sometimes I will sacrifice margin if I can make you know 30% or even 20% and I can and I know it's going to sell well. But I think it's safe to to get heavier margins. 
Um, and the higher the sales rank on an item, the 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 more margins I want. So so basically, if I have an item that has a really high sales rank, I might want a hundred percent margin or more, or I might not buy it at all. Um, maybe I even want a four hundred percent margin. So the, so that's kind of the typical things. Also, I want to look for items that are not extremely heavy, um, at least for getting started. Uh, also. You know, a lot of times these big retailers like uh, Toys R Us has certain toys that you can only get in Toys R Us. You can't get them anywhere else. And so Amazon can't carry those, but you can buy them and then sell them as a third party merchant. The same with Home Depot, right? Home Depot has lines of tools that like rigid that's only available in Home Depot. It's their private thing. But you can you as a third party merchant can can go and, and buy those from Home Depot and then and then turn around and sell them on Amazon and, and make money. One of the other ways that retail arbitrage really works out well is because uh, you can use like coupons and discounts in a lot of stores. So like uh, what's the what's the uh, Kohl's does a lot of discounts. You can stack a lot of coupons and discounts with Kohl's rewards and things like that. So you can use that a product that might retail for twenty dollars at Kohl's. You might be able to get it with discounts and everything for seven or eight dollars and still sell that on Amazon for twenty dollars and make a good profit. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, and, I, and I, I mean, also there's not to mention clearance, too, of course. So you can go and find things on clearance. Sometimes retailers are just trying to clear their shelves, and you can just go clear them out. And, and you know, something that was retailing for $20, you can buy for, pick up for 2 bucks and make money. So, I mean, it's just it's a big world out there, and there's a lot of opportunity. Off-season things are a real fun one, too. You ever go to Walmart the day after Christmas? That's right. You can buy all the, all the day-old Christmas stuff. Uh, the day after Christmas and sit, sell it all year round actually, but Walmart doesn't want to have it on their shelves on uh, December 26th. They're preparing for what? Valentine's, oh, Valentine's day. day by that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I actually just sold some, uh, it's February and I just sold some uh, Green Bay Pack Packers wrapping paper. So, I mean, Super Bowl is over and uh, Christmas is gone, but we just sold some Green Bay Packers wrapping paper. So, there you go. I mean, so get out there and try it.